Hey, it's like uh, the awesome blossom. You ever heard? <laughs> we got an interesting episode. We do today. have a good story. Some, some. It was a good content opportunity, but it was kind of a horrific situation. It was terrifying. So what went down? We're talking about barrels. We're talking about barrel barrel failure. Yeah. So on Saturday of last week, yeah. while well, you guys were all busy watching the episode, me and Zach and John and Rex were in the barrel house building new racks in the barrel house. Yeah, we're running out of room there. We needed yeah. to start going vertical. While we were in the middle of doing that, Rex was climbing around behind some of the barrels and we sort of hear this, <clears throat> hey uh, guys, I think there might be a leak back here. There's a small puddle on the floor. Mm. So I walk over there and sure enough, you could see you the could puddle. You could see the line of, oh. You could see it if you watch closely over time. I'll speed up this clip really quick, but you yeah. can see it expanding slowly. So yeah. we got a leak leak. So something happened while we were working somewhere else in the warehouse. Something just finally snapped on that barrel. Yeah. And it was essentially the impact of the weather and it just started leaking like a sieve. It's kind of a crappy thing. You never want a barrel to leak, but a good learning opportunity. Yeah. What could go wrong with a barrel? Why would it go wrong with a barrel? Aren't barrels pretty damn sturdy already? Yeah. Why is this even an issue at all, ever? What I think a leak like that proves is how secure barrels aren't. <laughs> you sort of, if you don't realize this, you look at a barrel and you think, oh, a barrel is one single thing. Sure. A container made of wood. But a barrel is not one thing. A barrel is many things. Bunch of things strapped together. So the only thing holding a barrel together. Wishes. Is, <laughs> and pressure. Hoping that the cooper was having a good day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is a dried out barrel from one that held some other stuff for us. Okay. I'm gonna, shit, I forgot the hammer. Oh, Thank you don't even need the hammer. Oh, is it that loose? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So let's see how far we can go before this barrel stops holding together. Right. That's two. Two. How loose is it? Oh, huh? still pretty solid. Yeah, it's tight, man. Right? It's tight. It's still pretty good. Okay. All right. There's. Now we're gonna have to go down from this side now. You ready? Yeah. I'm gonna go. Okay, now the only thing holding this entire thing together right. is this last hoop on the bottom and just the generic Hold on. seal let's, that's been made let's get, oh. over time. Just to pull out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you can now you can just sort of just pop these out like like an erector set. The Remember those? Slightest little bit of pressure. And then like with a single finger. And this oh. just all and then the head. Head's gone, and now look. Oh, look, the barrel. Hey, it's like uh, the awesome blossom. You ever did? <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Outback Steakhouse. Okay, and then now that look, that ring. bottom hoop is still holding this thing together. Yeah. Pull that bottom hoop off. There we go, bottom hoop's off. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good barrel hops. Now, the thing about a rack house and a barrel, when you're aging whiskey, and the barrel's sitting in that warehouse like this, is that depending on where it is in the warehouse, it's aging differently. And depending on what the barrel warehouse is made of, brick, stone, um, iron, uh, wood, uh, it's aging differently. And depending on which floor it's on, in which corner of the wall, and whether it's west or north or facing the sun rising and the sun setting. You're talking about how some of these barrel houses have uh, honey barrels. Well, yeah. Sections of the sweet spots, right? The sections of the warehouse where things just come together really well with that particular new make and that kind of barrel and that location, the humidity, the temperature, all the combination. And actually what's cool about this is that you get to discover in a barrel house how the same whiskey this on the same still distilled by the same person going into barrels made by the same company can then be put into these giant buildings and turn out drastically different. Um, and so when that happens, you've got the top of the building has a high heat impact and the bottom of the building has a low, more regulated temperature impact. And with every mash bill, you're going to end up with a, what the maturing guys will be calling like a sweet spot. Yeah. And that, and you only find that by constantly going into the warehouse and sampling things. What is it about a barrel that could allow it to go bad in the first place? I mean, it's, it's wood, it should be pretty sturdy. Right, well, if you remember from our episode with Jared Buckley and, and uh, Jameson, each one of the Coopers had their own stamp, and he said that was in the long run if a barrel started just leaking in the warehouse and coming apart, and it was so early, it was obviously due to construction of the barrel, they could go look at the barrel stamp and figure out who made that barrel <laughs> and go find that guy and be like, hey. <laughs> but even if you have a coopered barrel that's done really well, 
and everything goes right, if you have a five, six year old barrel and it's sitting in a hot part of the warehouse, as it goes, uh, remember heat pushes whiskey into the wood and then cold constricts the wood and pushes whiskey back into the barrel. This is where you get angel share. This is also where you get interaction and breakdown of the wood components with the whiskey. Right. And when you take apart a barrel, this is from a baby five gallon state, you can see how far the whiskey has penetrated into that wood. Now that's pretty far. This was in Texas, and so it pushed the whiskey really far into that stave. As a matter of fact, it pushed it so far, you can look on the other side. Yeah. Look what happened. Yeah. Look at that line. Starts thin, starts thin. Oh no! That's the leak. Right? And yeah. you can't see it on this one, but the stave that was right next to it had a little bit of it. And that's when you end up with this. Now you can see it even more on the other side. If you look, can you see back there? Uh, see this little oozing? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it's coming from that seam right there and then sort of drifting down. Yeah, it's just kind of tacky and sticky right there. Right. Now if it was cold in this warehouse, you likely wouldn't see any of those fresh leaks in there right now because the woods pushed the whiskey back into the barrel. Yeah. Right? But because it's so hot and the whiskey's being pushed out, uh, you develop leaks. Now, if it's so hot the barrels start to crack, look at that, then there's the potential that you end up with serious leaks. Beyond uh, how the barrel's made, uh, the environment the barrel's in, how the barrels are handled mm -hmm. can be a really big deal. And even going further back, there's trees involved. <laughs> when we first got our uh, 12 first source barrels from MGP, uh, they had been all produced on, and filled on the same day from the same distillation run. Right. So the same spirit went into these barrels. All the barrels were coopered by the same cooperage to all the same specifications, right. and they sat in the same area of the MGP warehouse. We got them and put them in our room. Yep. They were in about a 10 foot area. Mm -hmm. So that's as low a variation in temperature and environment that you could possibly come up with. But we still found a 20% variation from barrel to barrel, which means up to 20%. Up to. Oh, Somewhere like 10 plus. to 15%, but. Essentially that, as far as we can figure, just means the tree. The leak that we were showing earlier that we had to transfer the barrel out immediately, where's that? Yeah, look at the floor. Yep. <laughs> it just started pouring onto the floor. All the way down. All the way down, and if we push this further back, you can look. It just keeps going. We ended up losing about a gallon and a half of whiskey. So the whiskey that had a severe leak that was actively, you could see it coming out of the barrel. What did we end up doing with that whiskey after we pulled it out of the barrel and into a toast super, super fast? Where did it land? Well, we didn't like it as far as like, we thought it wasn't done aging. It wasn't ready. So it was a premature release. That's right. Of the whiskey. That's right. A premature release of the whiskey. So we decided, you know what? We just bought these two Jerkum barrels. Jerkum. And Jerkum is uh, as far as we can, it's a cider. It's a plum-based alcohol drink right. that's closer to cider. So it's made come. So it's plum cider. It comes from plums. It comes from plums. And it's jerk and barrel. So we got two. We put the pre-release pre uh, whiskey. We in took the jerk and barrel. Yes, we absolutely did, and it's right here. Uh, did you put your nose in there before we filled it? Yeah. What does it smell? Like? It smelled like plums. Okay. All right. Let's get in there. Oh yeah. It doesn't smell like this bourbon. Can get you that tell? Heavy dark fruit sweetness to it. Yeah. In addition to the bourbon, obviously. In addition to the bourbon. So, uh, look, this is the difference. This is a five-year-old barrel. Okay. Right? Yeah. Well, look holding, how new that was. It's holding up well, yeah. Well, which means probably not exposed to a lot of the elements. Where did it come from? This one is the rye whiskey, Polish rye. Yeah. I don't know what they were doing, but obviously not as exposed to the elements as this one. This one's only four years old. Right. You have like a three-year-old barrel in Texas. This is iron root. And look at the wood is still, looks practically new. Yeah. But look at the impact of weather on the hoops. They're starting to change. Oh, right on. Then here, you have like a 10, 12-year-old Isla barrel. Oh yeah. That we put bourbon into. And but, but look at that comparatively. <laughs> Daniel, we've talked a lot about barrels that have a proof of concept though that, that I think will be very helpful in your youth. 
you were renowned, even captured in a documentary, <laughs> for your barrel riding skills. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, really saved my ass a few times. Quite frankly, can think of no better example to demonstrate the the sturdiness mm -hmm. or perhaps flimsiness of any given barrel. So between these three, what do you like and what do you not like? And Wait, hang like? on. I've got this is it's very important. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely not the one. Oh, yeah, it's the one. This one? Yeah. This one right here? Yeah. So I circled back to the documentary and I was re-familiarizing myself with the events frame by frame. Yeah. And if you look closely, you weren't actually ever inside the barrel. That was your Dwarven friends. Ah. Huh. You were outside the barrel. Huh. <laughs> okay. The barrel rider of legend could totally get on this barrel. <laughs> no, it's not working. No, wait. I have another plan. No, you got another plan? Yeah. Keep going the wrong direction. Oh no! <laughs> I hope there's no snake in there. <laughs> Alright. Yeah? You good? Ah! <laughs> you good? <laughs> ah! Oh, no. <laughs> Don't hit your head. <laughs> I'm drifting! I'm drifting! <laughs> ah! I'm <laughs> Just so we do, so we don't have to carry it. Yeah, <laughs> seems reasonable. This is how we move all of our barrels. Okay, I'm putting it on maximum power. See if we can make it. All right, coming to truth. Coming to truth. Gonna take the hill. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> yeah! Go, 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 no! Mucci! Come on, stay on. Stay on. Almost. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think we got it. I think we got it. Oh, oh. Out the way! Hey, yeah, buddy! Yeah. Oh, we bucked the end to the bitty hop. I'm as happy as I can be.